Electrons have spin. So, whenever you talk of electron eigenfunction, we have to talk in terms of spin as well. So, let us say that the eigenfunction of this h of 1, although h need not contain spin, h may be only a function of space coordinates, electrons still have to be attached on that space wave function with a spin alpha or beta. So, we will call these orbitals or spin orbitals. So, let us say uh, this is the eigenvalue equation of the one particle operator. So, now please note a symbol that I am using chi. So, these chi's are what I now call spin orbital. So, we will try to make sure that we use this symbol whenever we have spin orbital. What is a spin orbital? Again I repeat, it is a one electron function containing the space coordinates and the spin coordinates. So, let me write it very specifically. So, H again depends on only R1, 3 dimensional R1, which can be R1, theta 1, phi 1 or x1, y1, z1, whatever, whatever coordinate system. However, chi i now depends on R1, of course, but also on the spin coordinates, which I now call omega. So, my spin coordinates are R and omega. So, this will be energy of chi i r 1 omega 1. So, this is this, this is the long form of this equation. When I am writing the short form 1, remember 1 refers to the coordinates of the electron 1 and whatever coordinates are required. So, this is space only, this can be spin. This can also have a spin in a many particle problem or in general also even for hydrogen atom when there are there are there are other effects like relativistic effects and so on we are not worrying about those effects in the hamiltonian so our entire discussion is actually a non relativistic quantum mechanics here so we so the, so the operator itself does not have a spin however the wave function of the electron must have a spin and we are calling the spin coordinate as omega 1 remember the orbital spin, this orbital, the spin part is not omega 1, the coordinates are only omega 1 just like the coordinates here are r. The functions which depend on omega will be called this, the spin functions and these two, there are two such functions. One is an alpha function with a half up spin, another is a beta function with a down spin, okay. So, if I can solve the regular space part, all I have to do is to attach the alpha part or the beta part to generate the chi, okay. So, let us say what are the chi's. So, chi's are these chi's which are called spin orbitals. So, the spin orbitals chi i are now product of the space part and spin part. Okay. Again, we have to be very, very, very careful about these symbols as much as possible from now on. So, let me write down a chi i of r omega. Note that this was r 1 omega 1, I am writing generally r omega. So, it can be r 1, r 2, whatever. So, this has to be a product of a space part alone and I am calling this phi let us say from phi k r and a spin part which is either alpha or beta. So, it will make it very clear to you that what I mean by the spin coordinate omega. The functions are actually alpha and beta as you have learned, okay, up spin and down spin, but those functions also depend on a coordinate just like your 1s orbital in hydrogen atom depends on r theta phi. So, those coordinates are what I am calling omega. So, omega is not the actual function, the function is either alpha or beta. So, for every space part, how many spin, spin orbitals, this is an orbital, this is a spin orbital. So, for every orbital, I can generate two spin orbitals, correct, trivially by attaching two spin functions and there are only two spin functions, 
alpha omega, beta omega. There are many space parts, but spin parts, spin functions are only two. So, for every space function, I can generate two spin orbitals. So, this is, these are called spin orbitals. Just, just as these are because they are one electron functions, but functions of space and spin coordinates and these just the phi k of r we will call orbital. So, please make sure that the symbols you understand. When I say orbital that means it is just the space part, okay. When I say spin orbital it has the space part multiplied by the spin part and this is just the spin function. So, you do not have to bother about this. The, uh, the space and spin there is no coupling in my Hamiltonian, okay. We cannot do that if the, the space, space, space spin orbital coupling is there. There is a coupling what is called spin orbit coupling which is not there in the Hamiltonian. So, that is what I know I first said the Hamiltonian depends only on the space part. So, the spin is just attached, there is no coupling. It has to be in the wave function because electrons have spin. But those two spins are uncoupled with the space part. So, they can just like a non-interacting Hamiltonian we are attaching the eigenfunction as a product. So, here we simply attach as a product because there is no coupling. So, otherwise you are right they, they, they actually have a separate basis called the spin or basis uh, which are which are more complicated basis for those kind of couplings, okay. And those are uh, dealt in, um, uh, in a different level. Okay, and quantum mechanics, but our, our quantum mechanics is non-relativistic. So, the spin simply gets attached. So, spin is very simple to a one particle part, but when you generate many particle you will see that the if there are complications even here, but as of now for one particle it is just trivial. You simply attach it. So, that is the reason I said orbital is a three dimensional quantity, spin orbital is a four dimensional quantity because this r has three and omega adds to a one dimension. So, you have total four dimensions. The, for the spin orbitals, okay. So, let us assume that we know how to solve this one particle problem for a non-interacting Hamiltonian, then we said that the eigenfunction of this must be a product of these spin orbitals. But now we know that this product must be anti-symmetrized product, right. This must be an anti-symmetrized product. So, we will see how to do that because we have already written that they must be anti-symmetrized product. So, let us assume that we have solved this problem and we have got set of spin orbitals chi 1, chi 2, chi 3, etcetera, okay, which are basically nothing but set of space orbitals with spin attached, okay. And each of them has an eigenvalue epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 and so on. Quite trivially, these space parts can be solved separately in which case of course, the eigenvalues will be equal like, like if I have these two have same space part, the eigenvalues of E1 and E2 will be equal and so on. But in general, I am writing this as E1, E2, E3. Right now, you do not have to bother which are equal and not equal, okay. Many of them may be equal. So, I have a set of spin orbitals for this one particle problem and a set of eigen, eigenvalues of this one particle problem. Then I want to construct the wave function for the two particle problem. So, this is this is the wave function. Remember, this wave function is no longer orbital because orbital has to be one particle, spin orbital or orbital has to be one particle. So, it is a two particle function, I am just calling it wave function now, which is should be the eigen function of this Hamilton. What does our theorem says? Our theorem, what does our theorem say? The theorem says that this psi of 1, 2 must be an anti symmetrized product of the eigen functions of the one particle problem, right. So, for example, psi of 2, 1, 2 can be a product of any sets of chi 1. Now, the only catch is that they must be anti-symmetrized product. So, let us assume what we can, let us say I put this both the electrons in chi 1 to start with, let us say. So, let us analyze this function. where I write psi of 1, 2 as a product of two one particle functions and both of them are in chi 1 spin orbital. Now, 
let us analyze this is it anti symmetric what is the answer no all of you are convinced that is if i interchange 1 and 2 they become identical so it is not anti symmetric it is actually a symmetric function and this can be a good uh, a valid non interacting bose eigen function for bose particles but not for so not for the uh, electron so what can i do now so let's analyze another function i put chi 1 1 and chi 2 2 since i can't put in the same so let's write this as a chi 1 1 into chi 2 2 and i ask the same question now now i know that already that one spin orbital cannot have two electrons correct because i can't anti symmetrize in fact you already know that that is pauli exclusion principle so what i just now showed is basically the pauli exclusion principle because of the anti symmetry pauli exclusion principle is valid but now what about putting one electron in one spin orbital and another in one spin, another spin orbital so for example chi 1 can be space part phi 1 into alpha chi 2 can be another same space part phi 1 times beta or different space part with a different spin part does not matter. Now this is clearly possible and we know that for example helium atom we have one is alpha one is beta right. So this is clearly possible so I can obviously put two electrons one in chi 1 one in chi 2 but is it anti symmetric answer again is no. So even though it is possible and we know that we can do it clearly it is not anti symmetric so then the question comes how do i anti symmetrize if you note the next wave function so let's analyze this wave function now where i put chi 1 1 and chi 2 2 and then subtract from it chi 1 of 2 chi 2 of 1 okay which means I have put the two electrons one in chi 1 and one in chi 2 except that the first electron here was in chi 1 the second electron here was chi 2 I am now mixing it up the second electron in chi 1 first electron in chi 2 and I put deliberately a minus sign is it anti symmetric the answer clearly is yes because if I make interchange of 1, 2, this part becomes this part, this part becomes this part and because of the sign, one negative sign, they become anti symmetric. So now in this case, this is a valid wave function. Right now I am not worried about the normalization. Remember that it may not be normalized to unity. So that part I am not worried, well, that can be trivially done, but it is a valid wave function. So, it is possible to construct a valid wave function of a two electrons by using at least two spin orbitals, okay, only two spin orbitals I should say not even at least, okay, two spin orbitals I can construct a product, if I have more spin orbitals I can construct more products, okay, many more than one product but at least two are required, one is not enough because the one I cannot anticipate, note that you might have said why do not you do the same exercise here write chi 1 1 chi 2 chi 1 2 and then write it again minus but you will see they are identical so it will become 0 right. Had I written this chi 1 1 chi 1 2 and interchange 1 and 2 subtracted it would have become 0. So there is no way and that is the Pauli principle but at least two different spin orbitals I can anti symmetrize by properly combining with a negative sign. I interchange 1 and 2 with the negative signs and that becomes an anti symmetric. Anti symmetric. Otherwise, you will not get anti symmetric. If it is plus, it is not anti symmetric. It will become symmetric function. Again, both function. Because we have already said that elect our electronic functions must be anti symmetric. So, it is true to anti symmetric. So, there is a tremendous significance. In fact, if you put plus, then it will go to a both function. It will not be electrons. Right? You understand? Because then if I put 2, 1, then this will become this, this will become this, they are, they are plus. So, it is the same function. So, minus is extremely important, correct. So, let us analyze how do I write this function in a manner 
which is generalizable to a larger n particle problem. Right now we are discussing only two particle problem. Eventually you have to write for n particle problem for any pair. Before you do that, let us analyze this two this function. 